You're listening to Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. Hi, I'm Lisa Birnbach, and this is my regular weekly podcast, Five Things That Make Life Better. This week, there's a little difference because while you are listening to this podcast or perhaps reading my blog at lisabernbach.com, I will not be anywhere near you. Uh Uh-uh. I will be doing something different and exciting. And at the end of it, I'm going to become somebody's mother-in-law, which is new and different for me. So, yes, my son, Exhibit A, is getting married this weekend. And I have to say that it inspires me to make this blog about love, or at least number one is about love, because they found each other. My daughter-in-law-to-be is from a small town in Alabama. My son is from Manhattan, New York, quite different. How they ended up in each other's lives is one of those things. And they really, I think, are tremendously in love. And I vote for love every time. I will say this. When my son bought the engagement ring, he was so excited about it. He was so invested in it, not just because it was the most expensive thing he'd ever bought, but the design and how she would like it and how her hand would look. And he (laughs) was planning to wait and propose in a certain way at a certain place with little cues and little, you know, I had a little tiny roll in it. And the next thing I knew, he handed it to her or proposed to her within about a minute of bringing the ring home. And I've never seen him so happy. And she says she's never met a man who treats her so beautifully. So I'm loving the love. And that is number one of this week's five things. And I'm also loving, I have to say, my daughters, Exhibit B and C, are part of the wedding party, and they're in love with the whole operation. They're loving the sisterhood of that. They're loving being part of their brother's bride's circle. There's just love. What can I say? I think that's what's been missing from this narrative all along. I needed five things like washcloths and fresh corn, but really what we needed was love. Okay, here's number two, and there's love in it as well. I read a story about a terrific person, a 34-year-old woman named Candace Payne. She's a real estate broker in Chicago. She was worried about the homeless people as the forecast for Chicago's polar vortex was going into extreme insanity. And the predictions were for minus 25 below or worse. And of course, as we know, it was worse. And what she did was she found an inexpensive motel, but a clean one, called, I believe, the Amber Inn. Let me just see if I have it in the story. Yes, the Amber Inn. And she was able to buy 30 rooms, and she charged it on her credit card. She's a working class or middle class young African-American woman, single. And she just decided she had to do this because she couldn't stand the thought of people freezing on the streets. Then... She went to the tent city where the homeless congregate in Chicago, and she, through social media, let people know what she was doing. She got people that she didn't know to show up around the homeless encampments and help transport them to the hotel, the Amber Inn. And then people started sending money, and people started just calling the Amber Inn and paying for rooms. And before you know it, I think she had 300 people off the streets. That includes children and pregnant women. She also got restaurants to donate food. She prepared food. She prepared toiletries. People on the streets of Chicago who had not slept in a bed in God knows how long, who had not gotten the privilege of a warm bath or shower. It's 
an amazing story because it was one person. And as she said, I'm not rich. I'm just a simple person. But she is a simple person with a beautiful heart. So right now I'm thinking, I love Candace Payne too. I have linked the New York Times story about her onto my website. It just proves that if you have a good heart or if you have a strong desire to do something, you can do it. The governor of Illinois called Candace Payne after she rescued these people and said, you've done more for the city of Chicago than probably the city of Chicago. So let's keep her in mind. I'm so impressed with her. And that story, if nothing else, will make you feel good and make you feel hopeful about humanity. Number three, on a completely different note, here is something that I urge you to do during the vortex or even the schmortex, whatever cold or slippery or slimy or wet weather happens to uh, visit your neighborhood. Take the shoes that you like, that you feel comfortable in. Maybe they're not new. Maybe they're old, but they're good shoes. And winterize them. Go to the shoemaker and have them put rubber soles on them. I just had a pair of really thick, they look like tire tread soles, put on a pair of boots. My goodness. First of all, it's Now, silly to me that all boots don't come with that kind of heel. Why not? But I've just made myself safer for winter. There's a picture of the new thick-soled By the way, they're thick-soled and rubber, and they grip, but you can't see it from the top of the shoe, so they look just as dressy or not dressy. Okay, you're probably bored by now of that. Here's more love, though. Number four. You know the actor Richard E. Grant, the British actor? He's been in everything from With Nail and I, his first film in England, to The Player, to L.A. Story, to The Age of Innocence. He's British. Actually, he's from Swaziland, which is in Africa. Well, I think his dad was the head of education for Swaziland. And I I think it was Swaziland. I could have my lands mixed up, but I think so. Anyway, Richard E. Grant has just now, at age 62, and after probably 30 solid years of good work, has just been nominated for his first Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in the movie, I always forget the name of it, Can You Forgive Me, with Melissa McCarthy. He's terrific in it. I don't know that he can win because it's a tough year, but no disrespect to him. Well, because it's his first and because he appreciates the honor, you know what they say, it's an honor just to be nominated. He seems to be enjoying himself through the season more than anyone. And in fact, I think because he knows he probably won't win, he's enjoying it because he's not stressed out, I think. But he's loving it. Every picture, every award show, every luncheon pre-award show, There is his big smiling face, and often he plays a bad guy or a dark guy or a weird guy, as he does in Can You Ever Forgive Me? And I'm just loving his enjoyment of it and his appreciation of it. And it's not like somebody like Ryan somebody or Emma Stone who gets an Oscar right away. It's really a long slog. Being an actor is not an easy life. But there's more. When he was 14, he wrote a beautifully written fan letter like no American 14-year-old would ever write. It wasn't in crayon, for example. And it was to Barbara Streisand. He had seen, I don't even remember which movie it was, but he had seen a movie. He thought she was the greatest in the world. And he wrote her a letter and he said, I know you're very famous and very busy. If you ever want to relax and not be bothered by the press, you should come to Swaziland. My family said you're invited to our ranch. Anyway, very touching. And the reason I know about that is because he has posted pictures of himself outside her gate in Malibu. And he just was such a fan. He remembered what he felt like at 14 when he first discovered her. And in turn, that's when he decided, ooh, I could be an actor for a living. Long story short, that picture of him outside her house, plus the letter which he somehow had, went viral. 
And now Barbara Streisand has written him a fan letter. And you can see all of this correspondence on my blog at lisabernbach.com. And whether or not Richard E. Grant wins an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, he's won my heart. He's so genuine. He's so appreciative. And that's what this pod and blog are all about, gratitude and appreciation, because no matter what kind of day you're having, it could be worse. Never forget that. Finally, number five. Can you guess? Can you guess? It's Robert Mueller. Mr. Mueller, do you need coffee? Do you need some aspirin, Tylenol, Advil, Eccentric? What's the other one? A leave? Valium? I got it. I got it. I have it right here. So I say to you, my friends, stay warm, get your shoes rehealed, and act natural. Bye-bye. That was Five Things with Lisa Bernbach. New episodes every Friday, if she remembers. 